Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with my friend Sam who is joining us to talk about all things Banff vs Whistler. So when you're deciding to come over to Canada or anywhere for a ski season, the biggest part is trying to figure out where to go. And I think for a lot of Australians, Banff and Whistler are definitely the two top spots. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a Banff vs Whistler comparison. With job opportunities in each place, housing, affordability, how crazy it is with tourism and lift lines, what the nightlife is like. We're gonna go through kind of everything you wanna know before picking which place to go live. So Sam is an amazing instructor. She is very <laughs> humble. But how many seasons have you done? 14? This is my 14th, yeah. It's crazy. How many summers have you had? Two in the last eight years. <laughs> so Sam, I, I was saying to someone at work, I reckon you're gonna go pro one day and be famous and you'll just be so humble about it. <laughs> But if anything, Sam has the best knowledge because she's worked in Japan, Whistler, yeah. Australia. Yeah. I mean, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Japan, Canada, Canada Australia. Yeah. Been to New Zealand, haven't worked there yet. So, so yes. Good. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are back, thank you for being here. Um, this video is going to be part of my Canada Working Holiday Essential playlist. So check that out. I'll link it up the top for you guys now. Um, but that is a great resource. If you're looking to come over here, there's a whole bunch of other information to help you. But let's get started with today's video. This is my roommate's dog, Lenny, who <laughs> just wants to be a part of it today. So there might be some celebrity appearances. So it's definitely possible to do a season in both as well if you're coming to do a two-year visa like most of us are. Um, but they are, they are far apart and they have very different conditions because of it. We'll give you a little bit of an overview geographically. So Banff is actually inland about 10 hours. It is in Alberta and it's about an hour and a half from the next main city and airport. Here it is more of a ski town. There's three different hills, Norquay, Lake Louise and Sunshine Village. So you have quite a bit of options. All three are within 40 minutes of Banff as well and they all offer really different terrain. Now, Whistler is a bit different in that sense. Um, so Whistler is super close to Vancouver. It's probably about an hour and a half by bus or car. Super, like, lots of options to get there. And then on the way from Vancouver to Whistler, there's another town called Squamish. So it's about 45 minutes outside of Whistler. And a lot of people like to live there. It's a little bit cheaper, but um, the main hub of Whistler. Yeah. It's in BC. It's probably only two hours if you go to the beach in uh yeah, go to Vancouver Island, things like yeah, that. So, so it's different. on the coast, so the snow is really different. So there's two mountains, but it's all one resort owned by Vale. So it's Whistler and Blackcomb. <laughs> That's a bit of the geography behind it. Um, so Banff and Whistler are a 10 hour drive apart or about an hour flight. So the first and most important one is the job opportunities in both places. So you're coming on a working holiday. So you kind of want to have fun while you're working. Um, Whistler has lots of different options. There's a lot of options with uh, staff accommodation, which is obviously super helpful when you're moving to one of these towns with pretty difficult housing options. But if you're in winter, you can work for the resort and they've got every kind of potential job that you might want from food and bev to instructing, to being a lifty, to working on the gondola, like all that kind of stuff. You could even work in safety on the hill and <laughs> get a free ski pass a good skill there which is super fun but um there's definitely a lot well, not more jobs yeah going because it is such a big place so whistler has the biggest ski school in i think it might even be north america it's definitely yeah. the biggest in canada so there's Crazy. in a peak season there's up to 1700 instructors between full-time and part-time wow. so to put it in perspective sunshine village in banff has about 60 to 70 instructors in their biggest season so That's just crazy. <laughs> it's like a lot a lot more people so there's a lot of work um when you're working for the resort like there's no worry about not having enough hours like you're always going to have a lot of work to do like yeah if you want to make money but then at the same time like there's obviously a lot of people around so if you don't want to work there's always someone who like can take you can take it on the flip side in Banff I think there are a lot of opportunities um the last two winters that I've been here Sunshine I've seen have been kind of continuously hiring the whole time. Yeah. Um, definitely not for, you know, the key really desirable positions. Um, but I still think there's a lot of opportunity if you want to come here and work in a ski hill. Uh, by the sounds of it, Whistler definitely has a lot more for that. But it depends on what lifestyle you want. So you'll yeah. figure that out as we go through. On the flip side too, I, there's a lot of work in town 
Probably in both yeah, places. Definitely. Some of the places in Whistler too. Isn't it if you work in town, you still get a free ski pass? Depending on where you work, yeah. So like, like, that's places, not really a thing here. No, exactly. A lot of the retail stores, so the ski and snowboard rental stores in Whistler, yeah. they'll pay for their employees' season pass. Yeah, yeah which, which I think really is a huge awesome. perk for yeah. sure. Linking on with job opportunities is housing. So I have a whole video um, up on YouTube about housing in Banff. So I'll link that one up the top for you guys now. Um, but as a comparison... What's housing like in Whistler? Yeah, I hear I, it's a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, it's pretty chaotic. <laughs> I definitely like uh, when I first moved to Banff, I found it like not that difficult. Um, and when I moved to Whistler the first time, we found it really, really difficult. So I moved to Banff the first time in 2019, and it was it was hard to find a house, but it, we found somewhere after being here for a month. Yeah, um, it wasn't like anything amazing, but it was somewhere to live. But um, you gotta take what you can get in these yeah, places. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> When you're moving to Whistler, if you're not moving into staff accommodation, if you don't know somebody and you're not in town, you're probably not going to find somewhere to live. Yeah. So when you know someone and they know someone and it's all kind of worked like through word of mouth, but if you are arriving, you're not in town yet and it's you're so posting hard. on housing pages, yeah. like there's probably about 50 to 100 posts a day yeah. looking for rooms in Whistler. I've heard nightmare stories. So I have a friend who worked up at Whistler. She was ski instructing as well, but yeah. all the little kids. Um, and she was living in Squamish, yeah. um, which is 45 minutes away. So it's a decent commute. Um, but she had stories of a friend she had who literally paid a thousand dollars a month and yeah. her mattress was in the hallway. Yeah. So she yeah, didn't even Whistler's have got... a bedroom. <laughs> like... Whistler's got some crazy, crazy houses. There's, um, there's one particular street called Eagle Drive and it's basically well known for having parties and it's like the house party street. Yeah. And like a bunch of my friends used to live in a house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bunch of my friends used to live in this house and like uh, it's two floors, living room upstairs. And on the bottom floor, I guess it used to be like a couple bedrooms and a bathroom and maybe like a, a second living area. Yeah. And they'd like subdivided this living area into this like hallway and like four bedrooms and oh. there was like no windows. <laughs> All the walls were like super illegal. shitty super <laughs> illegal and then you go upstairs into the living room and they'd put a loft bedroom above the kitchen and so there was like a ladder in the living room into this tiny little oh room that you like could barely even stand up in and someone was paying like 850 dollars how much are they paying <laughs> to live in there that so, landlord's living yeah. it up he could afford the legal fees yeah, yeah exactly that's crazy <laughs> Because of that, I think you guys will know that I advocate to get staff a comm if you yeah. can, especially if you're moving over here for the first time, regardless of which location or any other location you're mm -hmm. going to in Canada, if you can get a job with staff accommodation, yeah. I would take that first. Yeah. Get set and then you, if you don't like it, you can always move. Exactly. But it's and hard. They, typically like, staff comm doesn't lock you in. So at most, you'll have to give them a month's notice that you're moving out if you find something else. But I think most, most of the places are like 24 hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you can move out and then it's yeah. like, at least you have a home. You have somewhere to live, you have a job, yeah. you have a bed. How do you find the house pricing compared to Ben? So I was living with my boyfriend at the time and we were both paying 850 each. So That's a lot. we lived in a three bedroom, three bathroom house Yeah. Um, with like a small living room. For a comparison point to what Sam said she was paying with her boyfriend. So Tristan and I are in a two bed apartment. And we pay five fifty each a month. That's awesome. So That's really good. It, that is that is really good <laughs> yeah. for Bam. Yeah, um, I currently pay seven fifty for my own room in Bam, which is yeah. really good as well. But yeah, yeah. I kind of think the average is between eight hundred and twelve hundred. Yeah, kind of for totally. a room out here. Yeah. Just a couple of actual figures because I find that that's just the easiest fun. to yeah. understand. Yeah, there's definitely options, but both are really tough yeah. and for the most part really expensive unless exactly. you get lucky. But yeah. it's I, like, neither of us got lucky based on our first arrival here yeah. like you so, work for it and yeah. until you know yeah you're gonna be prepared to be like paying a thousand dollars a month Easy, yeah. yeah anywhere that you are and like yeah stuff come with the resort is like i want to say it's per, like 640 dollars a month okay and i think so, when we were in sunshine village stuff we were paying between 450 and 500 a month yeah even. which is really cheap Each. and yeah it's really really good location like if you... linked to the housing is also cost of living so would you say you found a big difference i would say this season in banff i think it's honestly catching up 
The yeah. biggest thing for me is that um, prices are kind of comparable, but tax is higher in BC. True. So you kind true. of think you're paying the same, and then you get to the checkout and you're not. This is got a, well, BC has a bigger tax on alcohol, so you got to pay for your beers, and they're like way more expensive. Um, do you know how much a ski pass is? Yeah. So that's so. probably also one of the biggest mm. things ever. It's so expensive. So to ride both mountains, if you want to buy, so Vale Resorts owns Whistler. Whistler sells like a Whistler Black home pass. Yes. But when you're buying your season's pass for Whistler, you got to be really careful that you buy the one that you want because you might accidentally buy the Whistler Black home one thinking that you're buying an Epic pass, but Epic is the Vale Resorts one. Yeah. So if you plan to go on a road trip and you want to go to a bunch of places in the States and you want to go elsewhere, then you want to buy an Epic pass. Yeah. If you accidentally buy the Whistler Black home pass, then it's only for Whistler Black home. Yes. And you get discounts on things. So you get discounts at like Vale owned, like or Whistler owned businesses like cafes and whatever yeah yeah, yeah. um but you can't ride at any of the other vale resorts yeah that's really good to know if yeah. you've watched some of our other videos you probably know tristan and i bought a mountain collective pass this year which is kind of like the cheaper version of epic yeah i would say like totally. it was one it's where we similar. could yeah go to like 25 different resorts yeah. But we had very limited usage in those places. Mm -hmm. So, do you know what a full season pass is? Yeah, it's just under a thousand dollars. It's about nine hundred and ninety something. I think. For a season pass for a Whistler? full epic pass. And if you're Australian, because that's like half the price about here. It's about though. half the price. So this year, yeah, like a crazy person, I bought an epic pass and I bought a ski big three. Did you? So I bought both because I was going to Whistler for a week. The ski big three is the three mountains out here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sunshine and Lake Louise. Yeah. So I snowboard every single day. When I first got back to Panther season, I wasn't planning on working for the resort. I was planning on just working where we were. Yeah. And um, yeah, and just bartending and and snowboarding. That pass is twenty four hundred dollars Canadian. It's so expensive. Which is really really expensive. Yeah, I've talked about that yeah. over here before too. Yeah, it's, it's super expensive. When you're buying lift passes, if you're brand new, like you're better off just buying a Sunshine pass and buying like a Sunshine midweek. Alternatively, you can buy a, like, midweek Lake Louise and then buy, like, a full week Sunshine if you really want to buy it. Like, yeah. ride at both resorts. And it's still going to be cheaper than your Ski Big 3. Really? See, Tristan and I looked at buying the Ski Big 3. Yeah. And we did all the math to figure out how many days we'd need to go for it to be worth it. Yeah. And it was, like, more, it was more than we were going to make it there. Totally. So that yeah. is how, how high priced it is. Totally. Yeah. It's just crazy. And Do it always like that. get... The protection option if you're buying from Ski Big 3. Yeah. Ski Big 3 isn't affiliated with any of the mountains. They're a separate company. Yeah. So I got a job at Lake Louise later on in the season. I went to Ski Big 3 and I said, can I have a refund on my pass or a partial refund mm -hmm. on my pass? Because I work for Lake Louise now. And they said no. So I got a, I got a season's pass through my job. Oh. And I got absolutely no money back from Ski Big 3. Other but, than the passes, though, you find that everything else is kind of similar. It's pretty similar. Like, yeah, cost of food 100%. and restaurants. Yeah, and everything, stuff. like, um, I mean, Canada in general, stuff like dairy and meat is, like, so expensive. Yeah. Um, Cheese in, is so expensive. It's so I'm vegetarian, so I have, I have never bought meat <laughs> yeah. to compare. But yeah, exactly. So I've heard people say that. Cheese is so expensive in Whistler that... <laughs> where we shopped they started putting security tags on the halloumi because people were stealing it <laughs> so they put security tags on the halloumi in a supermarket yeah otherwise pretty similar pretty comparable yeah i would say that like um if you have a car it's going to be a little bit more expensive in bc because petrol tends to be more expensive in bc yeah um, because you'll probably be coming on a working holiday and not have a car straight away too so we would have a little chat about the walk, like the walkability and how kind of big or small each place is. Because in my opinion, Banff is, Banff itself is pretty easy to get around without a car. Um, I do find having a car here super, super helpful because there's so many things out of Banff to go do. Um, but if you just want to get around Banff, you definitely can without a car because the bus system is really good. In summer, the buses are running like every 15 minutes at yep. the moment. I've also told you guys about the free bus pass for locals too. You just have to go into the info center here with your proof of residency and they'll just give you a free six month pass, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Yep. Especially in winter, if you live a little bit further out of town. And when I say further out, the furthest walk you're really going to be here is 20 minutes. Yeah. It's Absolutely. it's so easy. Um, 
cabs generally come really quick if you call them there's no taxi i mean there's no uber or lyft or anything like that here is there a whistle yeah so whistle has its own kind of company um it's called whistle yeah but they also have like three different cab companies but it is absolutely insane <laughs> trying to get a cab anywhere in whistle you will minimum like on a night out wait at least half an hour in the taxi rink if you leave a bar with everyone that's crazy. That's so See, we don't even have a taxi rink here. No. Like, you just call and tell them where you are, yeah. and they come straight away. Yeah. <laughs> For the most part. I know there's been a few yeah. occasions where they're backed up, but... Yeah. And then because of, like, how spread out everything is, yeah. you, you can't really walk unless you live somewhere super close, like Southcom in the village, or... Whistler is just so big. Yeah. And in the summer, like, um, both places you can bike really easily. Mm, um, good point. Yeah, which is really nice. But uh, in Banff, it's like, you can bike absolutely anywhere within a couple minutes yeah and then in whistler you could bike pretty much from anywhere in whistler but it's just gonna take you a little bit longer but there's really nice trails and they've obviously put a lot of work into making it well they're accessible. a huge mountain biking exactly place for the summer yeah. too yeah which definitely is not so everyone bikes everywhere yeah nightlife is a topic that i get a lot of questions about i didn't realize how big of a party town banff was before we moved here um and in my opinion, Whistler is worse. Yeah, by far. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but I've always said that's something to be prepared for. I think it is absolutely great if you're coming here on a working holiday, you just want to have fun, muck mm -hmm. around. Um, but it is something to be prepared for if you're not huge into the party scene. I would say Banff has a pretty decent nightlife. Like, generally, there's something happening almost every day of the week. Yeah. There's always something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's always something going on. There's always discounts. There's always a bar that has specials. Like, stuff is like pretty cheap most of the time yeah like say. if i'm paying any more than like five dollars a drink on the night out totally i'm like no yeah absolutely not like most places will do like yeah. drinks for like four dollars shots for four dollars and there's a lot of competition between the bars i'd say in Beth. yeah like everyone kind of wants to be the place that's the busiest and everything's so, just getting cheaper yeah everyone's that. always having specials and stuff like yeah. that do you go to Whistler? absolutely no chance there's no way how much would you ever, pay for a drink <laughs> like probably minimum seven bucks for like the same as what you pay 450 here for yeah say. like seven to eight dollars for like because even rolls. at Mel's here you can get like doubles for six dollars yeah exactly like high rollers are doing 375 yeah high balls which is so cheap yeah it's, that's actually a big thing on the affordability price too totally. but do you, it, there's a lot more places too in whistler isn't there yeah so when you go out in whistler there's like it's called the underground so Basically, it's kind of like going out of the city and there's like actual clubs. Yeah. So Banff, does, Banff has one club. Yeah. And it's literally like a gift store by day. It's okay. small. Like, super small. Which yeah. is kind of nice though, because then you actually feel like you're in like a busy bar. Because yes. Because we probably don't have enough people in, in Banff. It attracts think. quite a diverse crowd though, <laughs> too, because yeah. it's the only club. Yeah. When you go, if it's anywhere near Friday or Saturday or anything, like everyone is from out of town. It's super, like, just mostly tourists and stuff yeah but in saying that it's absolutely exact same but way worse than whistler yeah so on a weekend the lines are just insane they're absolutely See, i hate that everywhere charges i don't cover. live in a city i don't want to wait in the line no. i don't want to pay to get yeah you're paying like five to ten bucks minimum to get it's in not too bad but yeah. still yeah and that's like every weekend so it's like you don't know the bouncer then you're paying yeah and you're waiting and you're waiting like an hour and a half or something like that sometimes it can get absolutely and in nuts. winter yeah everyone from vancouver just comes up so in banff like you can't buy a house so you have to be living here mm -hmm. you can't just buy a holiday house whereas in whistler a lot of people from vancouver a lot True. of people from overseas have holiday houses and yeah. apartments and whatever because banff's a national park but whistler isn't so yeah. that's why it's so much more commercialized as yeah, well exactly and so all the rich kids from Vancouver come up on the weekends. Yeah. And they go out in Whistler. It's a vibe. Yeah. It's a certain vibe. It's a <laughs> yeah. certain vibe. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. So it's super funny and like way more expensive, way busier, just not the kind of crowd that you're like used to. But during the week, it's all locals and it's super fun and it's really yeah. fun to go out and you see all your friends and... And there's lots of options too. Exactly. More than here. Yeah. yeah there's a lot definitely. of underground. So it's like if you want to go out and dance and you want to have like a big night like on the dance floor, lots of DJs, lots of good music, like everywhere is really different. One thing that I do actually love about Whistler, though, in comparison to Banff, my heart is with Banff. It's where I've, we've stayed the last two years. 
Um, but I've been to Whistler three times and I went there for a ski holiday and my favorite, favorite thing though is that they have such a big like apro ski yeah, scene. Yeah, 100%. Like, <laughs> yeah. So if you've never heard of it, it's just like when everyone's done skiing for the day, you go, you have drinks, you party. Yeah. And in Whistler, I think we went, what's the main place called? It's like right at the bottom of the lift. Yeah. Really expensive. Um, long 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 long. <laughs> so there's this bar. Bar? Yeah, so when you're like, yeah, you come down off the mountain, you literally <gasps> ski into the Whistler Village, where the gondola base is. Yeah. And right in the center, there's this like restaurant bar. Yeah. With this massive patio. All like huge outdoors. When I went, not a single person was inside. Exactly. And everyone, everyone was like jam packed. But they had like yeah. a DJ. Yeah. It's just all like table service. Yeah. It's so fun. To everyone's up dancing. Put it in perspective of like how big of a deal this place is. Like Dom Dollar played there. Yeah. Dom Dollar played on the patio at Longhorns when I lived there. And it's I was like, so, this is it's insane. Such a fun yeah. night. <laughs> so expensive though. So expensive. So expensive. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, and you're, you're like basically paying for the experience. Yeah. yeah, and you have to do it if you're going. I think yeah. living there, though, you wouldn't really go there that much. Yeah, you? you would go there like sometimes, like maybe it was someone's birthday or like maybe your friends work there or something yeah. like that. But like most of the time, it's pretty hard to get in. You're waiting for a table. Like yeah. if it's a weekend, absolutely not even going to go close to it because yeah. it's going to be like two hour wait. So there's no point. See, I hate that. See, that's not something we have to deal with in there. No. Like you don't wait for things. Literally. Back onto the Afraid's vibe. Yeah. Bev just doesn't have it. And I think the reason being is because no hill comes right to town. Like, we aren't a ski resort. We're a ski town here. Yeah. And, like, by the time you get down the gondola or do the ski out at Sunshine, you still have a 20-minute bus ride home. I feel like the hype kind of dies off by then. Yeah, I mean, if you're at Lake Louise, it's 45 to 50-minute bus ride home. Yeah, I always yeah. fall asleep, yeah. like, on the bus. Yeah, so exactly. I really expected Bev to have more things like that. Mm. Um, even, yeah. like, patio parties or, like, I saw all these videos before I moved here of like, I think they do them in Japan, like festivals where they have, like, it's all outdoors, everyone's just doing yeah. ski here, it looks so yeah. fun, but they just don't, it's just not a thing here. Totally. Like, no. and I wish Definitely. it was a bit more, but, it's a, honestly, but it's Whistler a, is a great vibe for that. Yeah. It's embarrassing how many times I have been in a bar at a, on like inappropriate time of night, still in all my ski gear, like full on boots it's on. It's so like, fun though. Like, I love yeah, that it's vibe. so much fun, but you're like... What am I going to do with my snowboard? Like, if you are coming for the skiing and snowboarding, um, do you have a preference over Banff versus Whistler? Do you have one if you had to pick over? I'm very between Whistler and Lake Louise. They're my two favourites. Okay. But it's really so hard to choose. Comparable. Very Sunshine's different. like my like, third. It's good. It's fun. It's got everything you need. Yeah. I think Lake Louise. Lake Louise is probably my favourite. See, I prefer Lake Louise as well. We both snowboard. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's yeah. just... I hate getting yeah. stuck on flats and sunshine is a very like flat spot hill. Yeah. Um, both have awesome train, but it's very, very different. Lake Louise is like super steep and long and you ride like the whole mountain top They're to bottom so kind of every time, yeah. which is awesome. On a good snow day, it's unbelievable. You can just ride everywhere. Yeah. The train is insane and it's super fun. It can get super cold, um, which is pretty harsh, but at the same time, like if you're prepared for it, you can be out there all day. Yeah. Being out here is very dry cold as well, yeah. whereas Whistler is very wet cold. Totally. So I don't think it, it doesn't get as cold in Whistler necessarily. Yeah. But the cold bites you more because yeah. it's it is so wet and totally. you know your gear gets wet and once you're wet it's just not fun. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to riding in Whistler, I find like Whistler is unbelievable. It's one of the most amazing. I feel like Whistler <laughs> is not as easily laid out as Lake Louise. Either. Exactly. So like, it takes a lot to get to yeah. some of those lifts. So when I am riding at Whistler or Blackburn, that whole resort, like I always feel like I'm kind of just getting somewhere. Yeah. Whereas I don't really feel like I'm going up a lift and then like enjoying my run down. I kind of just feel like I'm always kind of going like yeah. A to B and I'm like going from this top of this lift to try and Lake, get you to can, that lift. At Lake, you can just like go up any lift. Exactly. You'll just find one on the way yeah. back down to go up. Like yeah, you're 100%. not going to get lost. Yeah. With no. Whistler being so, so much bigger in terms of like mountain and ski resort and everything, I found the lift lines there were crazy when we went. Like yeah. I have never stood in a longer lift line and I've been to between 10 and 15 resorts in Canada now. And I've never stood in a lift line as long yeah. as Whistler. Like, yeah, 100%. And there's a lot of spots in Whistler where you kind of get stuck and you 
the next lift over is like pretty far or like yeah. pretty big skate like you kind of just have to wait it out or there's even lifts where you, you have to wait there's no other way out yeah and um i just couldn't believe it on, yeah just an average day you're waiting 10 to 15 minutes minimum and then the chairlift itself is 10 to 15 minutes again so yeah in between runs you're waiting half an hour it's just it's a lot top. of waiting time i've yeah. never seen anything like that in banff yeah your longest lift line is going to be what 10 15 minutes yeah maybe, maybe. at most yeah and then but, it'll probably be on a really good day or maybe during christmas or yeah whatever else but i've I, and you can kind of go to another chair too yeah. like if you're standing up in the top of the village at sunshine there's what one two three four four chairs that go right from there all yeah. up different ways so yeah and whistler has a really handy app um and you just jump on the app and it'll tell you what the wait time is oh, at cool. every chair which is really handy um, Another thing I always, always get asked about is what to pack, what to bring, what are the essentials. Um, about a year ago, I filmed a video on this and it's called Winter Packing List. So I'll link that for you guys up above. Um, but coming from Sam, who has done so many winters, what would you say? Even yeah. even just coming here on a working holiday. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, try not to pack too much stuff. Keep it nice and simple. So if you... It's a very different lifestyle over yeah. here. If like, you're from... From the city and you like go out and you wear a dress and you wear heels or you wear like boots or whatever. Not here. No, it's not the same. <laughs> it's you don't need it. Anything you wear out here is so different. It's so chill. Like you yeah. can go in your work uniform, you yeah. can go in your literal tracksuit and no one is gonna blink an eye. Yeah. Um if Imagine... you wore like heels or a dressy outfit, yeah, you would just everyone look looks like at you dress. and they're like, You're from the city. Yeah, you're, you're clearly city. not from here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I would dress up nicer. For a lunch in Melbourne yeah. than I would 100%. for a night out here. Yeah. Mm. Also, not bringing too yeah. many pairs of shoes. Yeah. Um, I made a big mistake this winter and I bought Doc Martens as my winter boots. Yeah. And they are a great shoe. Yeah. But oh. in winter, absolutely not. They're the slipperiest shoe ever. The sole. It's just a nightmare. The sole freezes. The rubber freezes. It gets yeah. too cold and it loses all its grip. I swear, Tristan always thinks I'm just being dramatic, but I'm literally <laughs> walking down the street like this yeah. because I can't get any traction. Yeah. But you need to have a pair of shoes that come up over the ankle yeah. if you're going to be here in winter, okay. just in case it's there is a like fresh snow and you don't want snow going in your shoes. Yeah. Um, but something with good traction, Timberlands are yeah. a lot better. Yeah. Apparently, I like Timberlands. <laughs> I like them because they're warm, um, but they're also just like they're not super thick. You can buy stuff that's yeah. like insulated or like woolly or whatever like you can buy See, winter it, vans and stuff but then yeah. your feet get super hot when you go inside and i've never i've never really wanted like proper snow boots yeah. because they're so like clunky and like heavy you don't want to wear them out either like yeah. you just need something to get into town for a night out yeah something like something that is like perfect perfect. or like even like high top vans are pretty good too like yeah. vans vans aren't amazing in the snow but they're pretty decent like, yeah there's <laughs> not many pairs of shoes you really need yeah like if you're gonna be here year round like hiking boots runners pair of winter boots yeah, one um, pair of sandals yeah something like i really like uh i have a rubber pair of sandals and yes i, can just I have a pair of them water. too yeah <laughs> i bought them for camp for actually everything. they're yeah. so good yeah definitely. um i've got a pair of burks that i love as well yeah. um but i have them in both like the rubber and the normal version if you're gonna go with one go with the rubber because yeah. it's so much more durable and camping too you're gonna yeah. go camping all the time and your feet are just gonna be all dirty and you just want to wash your shoes and you just walk into the lake but a lot of questions i get from people is whether to buy their gear first or to bring it wait to buy it and bring it or to buy it when they get here yeah i've given them my opinion before but what would you say 100 percent, definitely buy it when you get here yeah if you're buying it in australia you're probably going to pay 25 percent more um <laughs> even, make that mistake <laughs> yeah something on sale in australia is probably the full price price in canada yeah because so, almost everything is made here right so they're shipping exactly. it over there to sell it yeah the majority on, like, of this side brands, of the world they're all from north america yeah so they're all coming from pretty close and yeah, everything's going to be super cheap. If you're arriving in summer and you're planning on staying for winter, there's always going to be sales. There's a bunch of ski and snowboard stores in Banff, in Whistler, any ski town really. Um, yeah. and, and if you work up at the hills, if you get a resort job as well, yeah. you get discounts at all of those places. Yeah. Um, but you also can get access to pro deals. Yeah. Um, and if you so good, if such you're good working deals. for a resort and you're going for a pro deal, as soon as you arrive and you know you need a board on on a pro deal and you need the discount, get to it straight away because yeah. you can only get stuff when they're in stock. So as soon as you arrive, as soon as you move it to your stuff com, 
ask about your deals, ask about discounts that you get, like yeah. in your orientation, find out about it, and they'll be able to sign you up and you should get them. Right? Yeah, I got 50% off North Face and I got like a four or $500 winter coat, best thing ever, so, yeah. so warm, and I only paid half price for it. Yeah. So definitely worth waiting because there are kind of a few like industry discounts and secrets and things that can help you get cheaper yeah. gear as well. Yeah. Lots of Facebook pages. Lots of people are always coming and going from here as well. So people are always yeah. selling their own if you gear. If you don't want to commit to brand new stuff as well, yeah. huge, huge like Facebook marketplace. The only thing gear. I would ever not buy secondhand is your boots. I would yeah. always buy your own ski and snowboard boots. Hopefully that is a little bit of an insight into what you need to pack to bring over here. Um, one last thing would be a lot of layers. Yeah. Um, you don't need to pack a lot of stuff, but things you can have as like a base, a mid and an outer layer. Outer, I think, is a lot easier to get over here because you can't buy a winter coat in Melbourne. Like, we came over with Kathmandu puffer jackets, which, to be fair, have served us incredibly well. Yeah, puffers but, are awesome. Yeah, but an actual winter coat yeah. does not exist in Melbourne. Not, no. not for these climates. No. So no. I would just focus on more, like, your mid and base layers, yeah. for sure. Uniqlo is actually a brand that I love i've done quite a few different brands of thermals mm -hmm. and i've never shopped at uniqlo for anything else yeah but their thermals are so comfortable and yeah, they're super like, lightweight not too Don't expensive space yeah they're like yeah i bought more packing. yeah just yeah, recently because they're so good yeah i think yeah. you can buy them online over here too yeah if you need more tips go and check out that other video we're gonna get into the last little section i put up a q a box on my instagram um, so if you don't follow that, head on over. I'll put the handle up on the screen for you. We have already answered a lot of them in the video for you today, but there's a couple of standout ones that didn't really fit into our categories. So we're just going to go through those really quickly. So the first one we got was, does the accommodation money come out of your pay? Uh, yeah, typically if you live in soft accommodation, your rent will come out of your pay. I loved if, that. It was yeah. just so easy. Typically you would pay, pay for two weeks of rent at yeah. a time out of your pay. And they just deduct it. Yeah. Someone else sent in a really good question. I did also address this in my recent video about working a ski season in Canada. So if you're really interested in just that side of things, you can go check that video out as well. But they ask when in a year you should be applying to come mm. and work these jobs. You've probably got more insight into it than I do. Yeah. Um, I think like, for example, Sunshine Village is already hiring right now. So I said, I yeah. said, like, you can a go, you can just go, even to go like up to a year in advance. Yeah, pretty much as Almost. soon as the winter ends, yeah. they're already hiring for next winter. Yeah. They want to get ahead as soon as, like, as quickly as they can. They want to have all their bases covered. So they will hire as fast as they can, pretty much as soon as their winter closes. So, yeah. yeah. As soon as you know you want to, as soon as you want to go, go down this path, yeah. get in. Even if you're not sure, like, apply. On the flip side of that, though, if you are going to come over with a company, you mm -hmm. can even apply earlier, like, I know people, they open up applications in October for the following year. Okay. So with them, if you're paying a company to come over, they even start working on it earlier because I think they kind of nice. get fast tracked and they do it all in the back end. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you yeah. as soon as you know, get over here. But then on the other side too, if you, if it's already like February and the ski season here runs from like November to May, yeah. um, and you want to come mid-season, you usually still can. Yeah, totally. You 100% still can. Yeah. yeah. They're always hiring. They're always hiring. And even if you, like, can't necessarily find it on their website or anything, like, it might say, like, seasonal applications closed, like, just email them. Email their HR, HR department. Or, There's like, always people that have to leave or yeah. choose to leave or yeah. don't they're choose to leave. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their visas end or whatever else it is. Yeah. But, yeah. There's always positions to be filled. For the most part yeah, so definitely yeah you've and got options if you're worried about like missing out because you're arriving late like you have not missed out like you november december is like cool we're snowboarding but it's really not that exciting as soon as you get to january february like you've still got february march april and april and may, may is like more yeah spring skiing and nice weather too yeah. there's a lot there's of variety so, many days. so you can definitely come mid-season as well yeah the last question that we haven't addressed yet is, are you guys still going home after your visa ends or are you extending? And now that is talking about me and Tristan, not me and Sam. <laughs> um, I think every everything is very up in the air for us personally though. So watch this space. I have no idea where things are going to go. The closer we are getting to leaving Canada, the more we don't want to. <laughs> it's such an easy place to just like never leave though. There's yeah. so many people who come here 
They've been here for 10 years and they only plan to come for one. Yeah. And honestly, I think that just is a great testament as to yeah. why people should come here because it is <laughs> the I, one of the best places I reckon yeah. in the world to live. Like, it's literally like the Disneyland of the mountains. And I just love it. But I don't know where life's going to take us. But <laughs> regardless, thank you guys for being here and for watching along. I know this was a longer video for sure today. Um, so we appreciate you guys sticking with us. If you've got any other questions, feel free to put them in the um, comment box below. Sam and I can both answer those for you. Um, but yeah, I think that was a pretty thorough Bamp vs Whistler comparison for you guys. Um, so hopefully it's helpful and it's helped you make up a decision. They're both great. I don't think you can go wrong though. Exactly. You can't go wrong. You yeah. just got to pick one over the other. Yeah. But just for now, yeah. you can always do both. Yeah. Um, but we're going to sign off and head out. We'll see you guys in the next, oh, I'll see you guys in the next video, <laughs> but thank you. Bye guys.